Hello, this is Russell Tackett, the Senior Electronic Sales and Application Engineer for Hydroforce. Today I'm going to discuss creating a simple CODASYS project. The video, the three part video, will follow the document Steps to Create a Simple CODASYS Project located on the Electronics Portal. There will be three parts to this video. Part one will discuss the backbone creation. Part two, We'll discuss um, creating the in, or the codices files, both the file to create an input um, variable, the file to drive PWM outputs. Those two sections, you know, sections four and five, will be in part two. Then part three will include section six and seven, which is downloading the codices file to your controller and creating a service tool. So part one, we'll talk about backbone file creation. Let me do an, an overview of the videos. These videos will document a procedure to create a simple CODASYS program. ECU backbone version 5.8 will be used. Um, the procedure is the procedure that I mentioned in the document is used to create a sample video to assist new users in creating their first CODASYS program. The ECU 0809 controller will be used connected to the configuration harness 4000306. This example will add an analog input through a 10K potentiometer that will drive two coils labeled valve 1 coil 1 and valve 1 coil 2. A service tool will be created to modify the min max current values of each coil also monitor the signal coming from the joystick. So, the as you see on the screen, I have Backbone version 5.8 opened up. The first step, we will need to create a new project. So under File, New Project, I will give it a name, ECU, first project. Now notice it doesn't like, if you do something that it doesn't like, it'll give you a red box and say, hey, something's wrong. You can't have spaces in the file name. So if you need to do you know, a longer file name, just do a, an underscore and, and, or start mixing in um, capital letters and, and non-capital letters. I want to save this onto my computer into a section that will be referenced later. Presentations. All right, create project. So it comes up and it says, you know, pretty much a, an open screen. Uh, the first step, we're going to add a controller. So I come under this uh, icon that looks like a controller and we can see all the different um, controllers that we have to offer, Hydroforce has to offer. From the 809, the 814A, uh, 2415, 2820, 2432, 3233. So if I come down to the 0809, we see that I've got the choice between a standard 0809, a single CAN port, a R version, uh, which this was modified for a customer that has um, a, a different input circuit on it, or an 809A. So in this example, we're going to just use an 0809. So the icon has popped up on our screen. Um, we're going to go ahead and double click that icon to come to a, a different series of screens. So there are different um, options that we can look at on this. The first one, the first tab, the CAN tab, um, this is what we would use to set up the CAN open communications. The J1939, this is the tab we'd use to set up the SAE J1939 communications and devices, both send and receive from this controller. Diagnosis, if we wanted to turn on or off different G type system OK variables. We would do that from here. Object dictionary. This is where we'll um, configure our can open variables. PDO. This is where we determine whether those can open variables are send or receive out of our controller. IO. This is where we will configure what pin, you know, what variable we'll use on what pin, configuring eight configuring the inputs and outputs to this controller. Events, 
we will, uh, if you needed to create an event for CODASYS, we would do that here. ISOBUS components, I'm not going to click on that, but if we were doing an ISOBUS project, we would need to go in there and, and configure the variables. There is some reference information on this controller located on our portal. There is technical reference guide. Uh, there's an ECU programming and library manuals. So before you start a project, you should really download those documents and have those available. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the object dictionary and we're gonna create three indexes. These indexes will, um, there'll be two parameter type variables or indexes. Uh, parameters are things that retain values on a power cycle and one RAM. Uh, so just monitoring variables in our program. I will create one of these and then I will pause the video and create the other two. So we want to add the first index. I'm going to label this index as analog input. And log input description um, and log input setup. We notice over here we can either uh, choose between a parameter or a RAM variable. So once again, we want it to be parameter because I want to be able to save these the value of these variables on a power cycle. Everything else can be um, kept the same. You know, read write type access, uh, single variable but I do want to change this data type from a byte to a word. So a, a byte is only going to give us a maximum value of 0 to 255, whereas a word would give us a maximum value of 0 to 65, 535. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I want to add, I think I'm going to add four or five variables here. So I'm going to add five subindexes. The first subindex I'm going to label as signal minimum. So S I G M I N. This will be analog input minimum value. Now, on descriptions, it doesn't matter about uh, the spaces, but on the variable names, it does matter on the spaces. We'll set him back to, actually, I'm going to set him to a value of. 50. My default value will be zero and my minimum value will be zero. That's fine. I'm setting this up. It's it's just a 10k potentiometer, but I'm setting it up as it would be a analog voltage type input where it would go from a half a volt to four and a half volt. All right. So I can tab over. The next variable will be called signal center. Let's see, IG CTR analog input center value okay um so i'm gonna the reason we're creating these is we're going to create a service tool later so when you're actually running the program you could go in and modify these values as opposed to coming back into backbone to uh, modify these values and then re-import it back into codices okay so this one will have a high value and you always start with a high value first of 275, so 2.75 volts. Um, the default will be 250 or two and a half volts. And then the minimum is 2.25 volts. The reason I set this up, when you go into your service tool, if you know, you're kind of putting some limits on what the operator could use. So I'm saying I want the center value to be between uh, two and a quarter volts and two and three quarter volts. So if they tried to set it at 2.1 volts, it would kick them out and, and uh, tell them they couldn't do that. Okay, the next one will be the signal max. This is analog input signal, I'm sorry, max value. Okay, this one will be a high limit of 500, a mid limit of 450, and a low limit of 425. So once again, um, the default value would be four and a half volts. Remember I mentioned about um, the signal minimum being, I guess I could set him to 50 too, between, between a half a volt and four and a half volts. So that's how I'm setting this up. 
there are other variables that I want to add. I want to add a what I will call a dead band center. So once again, when we are talking about having a, a joystick, I want to have a little bit of play off that center position so I'm not driving a valve for a certain amount of time. So I'm going to set that high value to be a quarter volt. Hold on. Uh, analog. <laughs> analog input. Dead band. Okay, I want the high value to be a quarter volt. I want my um, initial value to be uh, 0.15 volts. And of course, the low value, we're going to have just a value of three. Dead band here. So I'm going to have an, an alarm in this also. So I, I set up another variable called the air um, variable, analog input. DB air. Okay. And I'm going to give it the same values. So a quarter volt, 0.15 volt, 0 0.03 volt. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, put the video on hold while I add the um, two additional indexes. Okay. I have added two more indexes. I added valve one that has a valve one set up. It's a word also, also a parameter. There are four indexes or sub indexes in it. Coil one, I, min and I max. Coil two, I min and I max. And I've set up some initial values. So the minimum current going to the coil could be 300, maximum being 1100. And there's some variances in there also. And the same thing for coil two. Then I added a third index that is of RAM, so I select it, and you see it's a RAM over here, uh, that we're going to be able to monitor through our service tool the voltage value of the analog input, and then the amperage going to coil one and coil two. Okay, so all of those have been added. Uh, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to come up here and do something called an export XML. This is going to allow us to uh, create a service file later in this procedure. I think it's in video three. So I'm going to call it service tool and save it. Okay, so that's all the parameters we need to do right now. We're going to go on now to the I.O. section. So the I.O. section is where we're going to determine uh, what pins we're going to call what. So I'm going to start with pin 21. So highlight pin 21. He can either be a digital input or an analog input. I'm going to select him to be an analog, 0 to 5 volts. I'm going to give him a variable name called AI valve command. Okay. I'm going to give a comment of analog. input one valve command zero to five volts filter sample 10 that's fine what that says is that the controller will take will take 10 samples or samples from the analog input average them and then that will be the value that goes into variable ai valve command the next one we want to do is pin 12 uh, one one uh, word of caution here so you do have to to select what this variable is. So in other words, if I didn't say it was a digital input or an analog input, and I put it into Codasys, um, AI valve command would not um, be seen. So make sure you declare what the variable type is. The second pin we're gonna configure is pin 12. I'm gonna call him, and he's gonna be a PWM output, and I'm gonna call him valve one coil one. I'm going to give a comment of, I'm just going to use the same variable really for the, the comment. Valve one, coil one. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave the dither frequency a default of 200 hertz. But if it's something that, you know, you, you can look at the documentation for Hydroforce and each of the valves, they give a recommended um, dither frequency or, or PWM frequency. So you could key that in here. 
You can also change it dynamically in the program, although that's not the, the function of this video. Okay, so that's pin 12. I declared what I want the um, what I want the pin to do is a PWM output. The second is pin 11, also a PWM output. This one's going to be valve. Now notice that I put the same variable name in here. Um, the program tells us a that it's a, a duplicate has already been found. So you've got to change it to something else. I'm going to change it to valve one coil two. Comments don't care, but I'll change that also. Valve one coil two. Going to leave it. Leave them at 200, 200 hertz. Very good. Okay, so need to go down and have a return path for these outputs. So we're going to use pins 35 and 23. I'll do 35 first. So he can only be feedback. All right. So I'm going to label him. I'm going to label him valve coil, valve one, coil one feedback. So I'm going to paste him back in again. Put a feedback on there. Um, go ahead and call it valve one, coil one. I'm just doing a control C, control V, copy and paste. Feedback. Okay. 10, fil filter, 10 filtered samples is fine. All right. And let's also do 23. Now, you may be wondering why I'm choosing the why I'm choosing the pins that I am. I mentioned earlier about the um, about the prototype harness I'm using, which was the four million three hundred six part number available at Hydroforce. Uh, there are two plugs on here. One's labeled A, the other's labeled B, and those would connect directly into my which coupled coils. So. Um, I know that the wires that I'm using or choosing to use, like 12 and 35 and 11 and 23, are already wired up to those plugs. All right, so let's put a comment in here, which is valve one coil two feedback. And it, it doesn't it doesn't care what you put in the comment, so you can spell things wrong or have spaces or whatever you like. All right. Okay, so we've created our our I/O. You know, we've we've declared. You know, we've selected the I/O, um, the analog input, the two PWM outputs, the two feedback pins. We've done the object dictionary, so we're good there. I'm going to return to the network editor, and we're going to create the codices file, um, and then that'll be the uh, the end of this video. So you'll notice I've selected the icon for the controller. And there are um, four tabs up here that we could uh, use. The third one from the left is Create Codices Project. So when I touch that, it's going to open Codices because I have Codices um, loaded on my computer. So the last step was it had created a CODASYS project. This concludes this video. Um, please tune in for parts two and three to discover how um, the input files are created in CODASYS and also how to create the service tool. Thank you.